Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm headed to help Mitchell pop some holes for the fence that we laid out the holes for the other day. If you missed that video where we laid out the holes, we'll put a link in the description so you can go back and catch up. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a pipeline welder for the last seven or eight years. But here recently, I've been doing more mobile rig welding work, a lot of it being fence. But that's actually what I started out doing before I ever went pipelining. It's a good way to get experience and use your mobile welding rig to keep income coming in. If these are videos that you might be interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. I'm excited to take you guys along. Let's head on over there and start popping some holes. All right, we just got out here, got our trailer unloaded. Now we're fixing to, to pop some holes. We got some plywood to cover the driveway, right? Yes, we're gonna use those two sheets of four by eight uh, plywood that we got there, nothing special, just to try to disperse a little bit of the load of the skid steer when you break over from grass to concrete or vice versa. Something that I've never actually used before, but I've never been in a situation where we were highly concerned about it. And she's got a real nice driveway and we're gonna lay that down and just keep from potentially cracking the driveway out just there on the edge. Right, right. So we're fixing to pop some holes. We're gonna try to go at least four foot, right Mitchell? I mean, that's what we're yes, for. we're gonna go about four foot, give or take a little bit. We averaged out our posts and you don't per se need to go four feet. But if you're gonna have drop, instead of making that extra cut, I like to put it in the hole, because any leftover pipe you might as well use to ridge it up that fence instead of wasting it and just tossing it off in the scrap bin. And it's not gonna take any longer for us to drill a few more inches. All right, I wanted to take this moment to address the video a couple, couple weeks ago about the extra post sticking out of the ground. I was tying into like a four foot fence and I made my posts like 10 foot long and only dug like three foot holes. So we ended up cutting off like three or four foot. If you haven't seen that video, we'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Cause I think it's a cool video other than that. That was my huge mistake. I want to take ownership of that. I did not communicate to Mitchell and the guys that were helping us that we needed to go deeper. I was in a hurry and the day before that I had just talked to a guy, another guy, about the comment that Mitchell just made about how if you have extra pipe just put it in the ground or make it more sturdier. So that was in my head and I forgot that we were tying into a shorter fence. So that, I mean it's totally on me. I did not communicate that. Got in a hurry. I'm bad about getting in a hurry. So we had waste and I figured it up it was about 60 foot of waste. So two joints of pipe. So that one's on me. Craig, that's the guy we've done the work for. So that one's on me. I apologize. That is the issue with the extra pipe in the ground. So I just wanted to address that and claim ownership and let you know that I definitely learned from it. I'm a huge advocate of learning from your mistakes and I definitely learned from it and I will not, I'm not going to say I won't do that again, but it's like the chances of me doing that again are very low because that kind of stuff sticks with me because it's embarrassing and all kinds of stuff. So a little piece of advice in the middle of this video, as long as you learn from it, that's what's most important. So Moving on with the video. Shoot, yeah, and we got them spaced. Uh, I think some people have asked like how far apart we put the post. You generally go ten foot apart, unless for me, if, different. if we're doing, I if we're doing fence, whether it be barbed wire, piping cable, piping pipe, I go ten foot on centers or less. I know certain people like to maybe go a little bit more. I feel like even with schedule forty two and three h runners anything over 10 foot and it starts to get a little bit more give in it than if my 215 pound hind end wants to crawl up and over it <laughs> so uh i like to see it and i feel like it's aesthetically pleasing and then you might shorten them up obviously around gates or areas where you're tying into other other structures or whatnot right right shoot yeah i'm ready to rock and roll
All right, so we got all but just a few holes popped, roughly 40 holes, 45 total. And uh, Mitchell's probing these last couple around this water line. What size, you said 18 or 20 or 24 or something? I want to say the gentleman told me 24. It's a pretty big water line we're trying to avoid here. Better safe than sorry. And I want to say he told me that it's 40 inches deep from the surface. Oh, okay. Like it probably not gonna be a situation. Good ground too. This stuff went, you know, quick just because it, it was good ground. Oh, yeah. it's, it's been raining, so. Austin, I'm I've probed two here and we have yet to find that line, so I'm feeling pretty safe with right. going on ahead and uh truck headed back to the house had a pretty good day we ended up setting the I couldn't talk very much because it was so windy today the old Oklahoma wind so it makes it hard to talk into the camera to where you can actually hear me this truck ain't much better with these big tires but anyway we ended up setting the or uh, digging the holes for the gates there's a couple of gates gonna go in front of that shop that are like what do we say 16 foot two 16 foot gates I think so we put those, we drilled those holes about five foot instead of, we drilled the rest of them about 42 inches roughly. Tried to at least get 42 inches in, in all the holes, the 12 inch hole. Gonna put at least two bags of concrete in every hole, four and a half inch post. But anyway, the, the holes where the gates are gonna hang, we put in about at least five foot. So, and then put, I think, four bags of concrete in those. So they're super sturdy gate's not going to sag and, and everything yeah we want like it's sturdy you know what I mean we want that stuff to go nowhere come on we're all about a good sturdy sturdy fence so I think that's going to be it I'm going to head on home and then I'll be back tomorrow to set the post we kind of got a late start but I think we got a lot done it took us about took us a little over an hour to punch 45 holes I believe I'm going to say an hour and a half to punch 45 holes and then the other 20 30 minutes because it took us essentially two hours but the other 20 or 30 minutes we were probing around that water line just making sure we were clear of it you know better safe than sorry so that's the kind of stuff i like spending time on is you know that better better safe than sorry stuff because if not it if you hit a water gas electric any of that stuff it's uh end up being an ordeal that it's just not worth dealing with also i wanted to start mentioning this at the end of the videos or anywhere in the videos about this master workwear list that Kayla and I have mostly Kayla has created it's like a master workwear list that has anywhere from safety glasses to gloves that I use the clothes that I wear the winter apparel summer apparel boots welding gear I mean all kinds of stuff on this list so we'll put a link in the description if you're interested all you got to do is give us your email and then we'll send you the list my advice for this week is patience is key what I mean by that is sometimes when doing projects like fence it's easy to get in a hurry because from the road you can't see it or from right here you can't see it or oh that's fine you know or surely it'll be okay or it's getting painted you know you make all these excuses and one thing that I've been trying to do is keep my quality up there, but sometimes that means just being more patient, like slowing down. If you're anything like me, you tend to get in a hurry. And just because you, you want to get done, you know, you want to 
make sure that you're you're getting stuff done for the customer and and the funny thing is is to do it the right way you know the, the maybe might take you a touch longer but it might look better or you know it's just that craftsmanship of of welding and fabricating and even setting posts straight I mean everything it's just taking that little extra time to go get the tool or to go you know to trim something out or whatever it takes just a little extra time or dig a hole deeper to make it legit taking that little extra time it's something I struggle with Mitchell's actually better at it than I am and that's why I like working around him he's good influence you know surround yourself with people that you want to be like and you will find yourself you know uh, doing better you know if you're looking to get better so anyway that's my advice is patience is key be patient and take that extra step do quality work so anyway thank you for watching this video we'll see y'all next friday and remember learn something every day